That is the grace of God. It's the benefit of life. It's the working of His power. It's the flow of this anointing. It's seeing the results of it as a result of it. And by His grace, I am what I am. Everything that I'm able to do, everything I'm able to achieve, it's because of His grace. Come on in. We're talking about the grace of God. This is Alan Bagg, and we're on Wisdom for Life. This week, we've had an awesome study talking about our God of abundant grace. He is the God of grace. He's the spirit of grace. He is the grace of all truth. He is full of grace and truth. We thank God that we're able to access that grace by walking boldly into the throne of grace. The Bible says that when we do, we will obtain grace to help in a time of need. And so we've had a look at how as good stewards, each one of us have been given a measure of grace, and the measure is according to the measure of Christ's gift. And so literally that means we've been given all grace. And that grace is available to you and me, and we are told to be good stewards of the manifold grace of God. So we talk about the manifold grace of God. That talks about God who is grace. He's all grace. He, that's His very nature. It's His personality. Like I've said before, it's the heat of the sun. The sun gives off heat. Well, the God of love gives off grace. And so when you're in His presence, you'll always experience grace. But now that grace will show up in different ways. And so whether I am teaching right now or I'm a father to my children or a husband to my wife or a pastor to the church, those are different manifestations. And the one gift is not necessarily used in the other area. And so whatever area I am in, the gift for that area needs to manifest, and it manifests by the grace of God. And so if we understand that and we get insight into these different graces, we'll be able to access them far more efficiently, and so we can walk in the full power of God. That's what my desire is for you, that you would see in your life, whether you are a father or a mother, or a pastor to a church, whether you operating in a ministry like prisons or hospital, or whatever, if you're in business, there's a grace for that, that's going to help you become everything God's called you to be in that area. And so we saw yesterday, we had a look already at the manifestation of the power of God, 2 Corinthians chapter 12, verse 7 to 10. We saw that grace is the manifestation of God's power, that we can run off the enemy through this grace of God. Hallelujah. And then 1 Peter chapter 3, verse 7, we saw that as husbands, we need to treat our wives with dignity. We treat them with respect. And when we do that, our prayers are not hindered. And then we see that we together can access the grace of life. What's that talking about? The benefits of life. In fact, the Message Bible puts this way, that you can, in the new life of God's grace, you are equals. And so together as partners, we see far more power in the grace of God than each one trying to do their own thing. Because think about this. When you're married, the Bible says the two become one. And so if you're walking together, it's best to be in unity because where there's unity, God commands the blessing. Hallelujah. So no matter how you've been struggling in life, always trust the grace of God to deliver you out of that situation. Now, we also saw Paul spoke in Ephesians chapter 3, verse 6 to 7, how he had received the gift of the grace of God, and that through that he saw the effective working of God's power. So in whatever you're doing, you need the power of God, whether you're in ministry to cast out demons, to pray for the sick, to get healed, to lead people to salvation, whether you're in business, to sign contracts and deals, to make decisions, to build companies in a marriage, to make that marriage work, raise children. All of that requires power. And I have access to the working of His power, the effective working of His power, Ephesians 3 verse 7, by the gift of the grace of God. Have a look at Acts chapter 11. Yeah, we see in Acts 11, verse 22, the Word tells us, The news of these things came to the ears of the church in Jerusalem, that they sent out Barnabas to go as far as Antioch. When he came, now listen to this, and had 
seen the grace of God, he was glad and encouraged them all that with purpose of heart they should continue with the Lord. It's interesting here, yeah? says that Barnabas, when he had seen, he came and he saw the grace of God. Now, think about this. If God is the God of grace and he's seated on the throne of grace, and I'm told to come boldly into the throne of grace, you do understand that right now as I'm sitting here, I can lift my hands and say, Father, I come boldly before the throne of grace. I am not seeing any throne in the natural. Why? It's a heavenly throne. Isn't that right? I'm not seeing God, His Spirit. And so the day will come when we will walk tangibly into that throne room and we will tangibly see God. But at this moment in time, it's by faith that we see this. So what did he see if the Bible says he saw the grace? What does grace look like? Well, what was happening? There were miracles happening here. People were being healed. People were being delivered. People were, were, were being set free. It says here, yeah, the news of these things came to the ears of the church. In other words, people were being healed. People were being delivered. People were being set free. These are, we're talking about testimonies. We were seeing tangible results happening. And when he came, he saw this marriage, which was about to break up in divorce, that couple are more in love than they've ever been before. This guy over here was crippled. Look at that. He's walking. We're talking about the results of the work of God. So grace is not only the power of God. It also is the result. So when you see the result showing up, there's the manifestation. Someone's healed. That you, the fact that that person's healed, you saw the grace of God at work. Hallelujah. Is that good news? Now, with that in mind, go to 1 Corinthians chapter 15. Now we're going to see Paul once again. Remember, he was tapping into the wisdom of this grace, the revelations of it. Look at 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verse 9. He says, I am the least of the apostles who am not worthy to be called an apostle, because I persecuted the church of God. But by the grace of God, I am what I am. And this grace toward me was not in vain, but I labored more abundantly than they all, yet not I, but the grace of God, which was with me. Now, what I want you to see here, he says, I am the least of the apostles who am not worthy to be called an apostle. What was Paul saying? The way I saw that, is I could imagine, you know, if anyone's gone to apply for a job, you will go ahead and fill in a job application form. And depending on the skill levels required for that job, there may be other questionnaires. So if you're applying for a job that has need of higher skills and education, they may want to know what, where were you trained? What are you trained in? What are your skill levels? Can you handle these problems? And sometimes they may give you a bunch of problems, say solve these, to test your skills. And if you're not able to fill that form in correctly, you don't match up, they'll say, you're not the man for the job. And Paul was saying, if it came to be an apostle, I'm the last one you would choose. If you think of what an apostle should be, I'm not even the right guy for the job. I'm the least of the apostles. Yet, the Bible says, by the grace of God, I am what I am. He understood that he could not be the apostle that he was unless it was by the grace of God. And listen, he says, yeah, it was not in vain. I labored more abundantly than they all. He was more successful than any of the other apostles. Now, how could that possibly be? Well, it was Paul. Well, but remember, he wrote in Ephesians chapter 4, verse 7, to each one of us, grace was given according to the measure of Christ's gift. That means every single apostle got exactly the same grace as Paul got. He says, each one of us received this grace. So that means you and I have also exactly the same grace. We have the same grace, the same potential as Jesus. Wow! So now with the potential of Jesus, where do we go from here? So how come he succeeded, even though all the apostles got the same grace, how come he succeeded more? 
he discovered a truth. He said, I labored more abundantly than they all, yet not I, but the grace of God which was with me. In other words, he realized grace on its own is not enough. You put it into action. And so when he stepped out doing something that he thought he wouldn't be able to do, or even if he wasn't qualified for it, he still did it. And when he did it, the grace showed up. And he saw the result of that grace manifesting in his ministry. And the moment grace showed up, it went beyond him. He thought, well, I can do it again. And he stepped out further and he stepped out more and he kept moving and he kept going into that uncharted territory, that place of non-comfort and kept reaching and kept moving and kept ministering. And every time he went for it, grace showed up to meet that need. That's the key. What you've been nervous about, step out into it. Start doing it. God called you, go for it. Because when you do it, grace will show up. When he called us to plant this ministry, I and my own ability thought, I'm the last guy you should use to plant a church. But when we came down here and stepped out, grace showed up and grace has been manifesting ever since. Now with that grace, as I stepped out into ministry, grace showed up, I accessed that grace and started ministering in it. And when I ministered into it, what happened? Other people's joined in. Other people came and said, I want to be a part of this. That same grace flowed into their lives. Let me show this to you. You come with me to have a look at uh, Philippians chapter 1. Philippians chapter 1. And here we see Paul talking to them in verse 2. I want to read this to you from the King James Version. Listen to this. He says, Grace be unto you, and peace from God our Father, and from the Lord Jesus Christ. I thank my God upon every remembrance of you. Always in every prayer of mine, I make for you all making request with joy for your fellowship in the gospel from the first day until now. Now, you see that word fellowship? That's an old English word for partnership. So this church partnered with Paul, and he says, now I'm praying for you. And every time I pray for you, I think of you with joy. Why? Because from the first day till now, you partnered with me. And he says, I'm very confident in this very thing, that he who's begun a good work in you will perform it until the day of Jesus Christ, even as it is meet for me to think of this of you all, because I have you in my heart, inasmuch as both in my bonds and in the defense and confirmation of the gospel. Listen to this. You are all partakers of my grace. Hallelujah. Now Paul's calling it his grace. What is that? That is the anointing that showed up in his life. As he got revelation that no matter what challenges came against him, how much he was attacked, no matter how much he was persecuted, when he trusted, when God said, my grace is sufficient for you, he walked in that grace and he saw the power of God show up. He planted churches. He healed people. He preached the gospel. Signs and wonders were happening. Grace was flowing. And then he discovered that as churches like this church in Philippi partnered with him as they gave into his ministry. Remember Philippians chapter 4, he says, you once and again sent aid for my necessities. In, even in Thessalonica, you looked after me. He said, with you, I lack for nothing. So they provided for him. He said, as a result of your partnership, you are partakers of my grace. This grace is now transferable. It's an anointing that flows into the lives of people that say, there's a grace on that ministry. I see grace to preach the gospel. I see grace to multiply. I see grace to get people saved. I want to be a part of it. And when people partner with that, then what happens is that grace now shows up and it manifests and it becomes a part of their lives. Now, as a result of that, that grace is at work, not only in that apostle's life, but also in the life of his partners. And we've seen that here. We've seen so many people that they come to this church, thought they were lost, busted, and disgusted. Marriage is breaking down, business is failing, and tapped into this ministry. And when they started giving, that grace showed up in their life. What is that? That's an anointing. The grace, the manifestation of grace is the anointing of God. 
And so whenever you see the anointing flowing, that is the grace of God. And so now we see this grace showing up. It's the benefit of life. It's the working of His power. It's the flow of this anointing. It's seeing the results of it as a result of it. And by His grace, I am what I am. Everything that I'm able to do, everything I'm able to achieve, it's because of His grace. See how wonderfully powerful this grace is, and it's yours today. We've been looking at this. It's been a wonderful week, and I really want you to tap into it. This grace is available to you. Now, you and I can apply this in the very important aspect of our lives. As you know, on a Friday, this is our giving day, and I want you to see how powerful grace is. When you look at all the different manifestations that we have been looking at this week, knowing that we have this opportunity of walking in the abundant grace of God. He says here in 2 Corinthians chapter 9, verse 8, God is able to make how much? All grace abound towards you that you always having all sufficiency in all things may have an abundance for every good work. Now, that is a lot of alls and always and everys and abundance. Listen, our God wants us to live in a place where you will see that if you have all sufficiency in all things, whatever you need, whether it is where you live, what you drive, what you wear, what you eat or drink, what you need for your children, your ministry, your businesses, every area that you will have all sufficiency for all of that and have left over after all of that that you can give into every good work. Now, you realize that in the natural, that's almost impossible. Very few people walk in that. And so how do we access that? Notice he says he's able to make all grace, all grace. So everything we've been talking about this week, the grace of the manifestation of God's power, the grace of the working of His power, the anointing, the results, by the grace of God, I am what I am. All these different things are now showing up in my life. He's able to make that abound. How? Now. And God is able. So that and, the trigger point for that able is out of verse 7. And it says in verse 7, let each one give as he purposes in his heart, not grudgingly of necessity, for God loves a cheerful giver. And so what I see from this is that grace manifests in its greatest measure in an atmosphere of generosity. Isn't that interesting? Now think about that, because the Bible says that God so loved the world. That's a manifestation of grace. That's who He is, grace, the mercy that He gave. His only son. See, in the presence of grace, his generosity showed up. He saw his family lost and he wanted his family saved. And as a result, out of grace, he gave his son. Because in that giving, he received a life. The, he received the family, the life of each and every person to be born again. And so if I look at all the different ministries, different men and women of God that I know around the world, when I see a ministry that's doing really well, successful in reaching people, getting people healed, delivered, I've never yet found in that ministry that that man or woman of God is stingy. Every one of them are generous. Why? Because in that atmosphere of generosity, grace shows up. When I'm a generous person, I see a need and I want to reach that person what compels me to teach this word? Because I know people are getting delivered by it. I'm a steward of the ministry of God. Why would I pray for someone to get healed? Because I want them delivered. I want them out of the pain. Jesus paid for it. They can be healed today. And so I reach out. I mean, that, that's a spirit of generosity. And that'll translate into my giving as well. So when I give generously for the word of God to be preached, that others can hear this gospel, that we go and go and touch people in prisons, in outreaches, in salvations. When I'm a part of that, as I give generously, 
God makes grace abound towards me. And so when you look at verse 6, that person will sow generously what happens. They reap generously. And so I want you to know today, as you sow your seed, as you give into this ministry, the grace that's on this ministry flows into your life and it abounds. And I want to agree with you on that prayer. If you are giving today, there are the details on the screen. You can go right ahead. It's very easy to use. I'm going to pray this blessing over you now. Father, I thank you for my dear partner. And I thank you for this blessing of grace. As they sow today, you cause grace to abound in their lives. And they always have all sufficiency in all things. And abundance for every good work. And we believe it in the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. Praise God. It is done. It is yours. And we give praise for it. Amen. Amen. Now, I've got something else I want to share with you. I'll see you right after this. Alan Bag Ministries is coming to your area. If you're in the Port Elizabeth or Tabeja area this weekend and early next week, Alan Bag will be ministering at the Victory Ministries Annual Conference, the Ministry of Jerome Liberty. We encourage you to join Alan Bag for a powerful time together in God's Word. For any information relating to this event, please visit us online or visit us here at allenbagministries.org. As born-again children of God, we have been made the righteousness of God, and by faith, we have access to God's grace. Whatever you're doing, whatever your call is, whatever vision is in your heart, grace enables you to fulfill that. In this life-changing series, Alan Bagg will teach you the relationship between righteousness and God's grace. You're going to see God in a whole new light, and it's going to really make your walk with Him even more powerful. Learn to triumph over any obstacle in your life. When you see grace the way God intended for you to see it, and you walk in it, you're going to see yourself reigning in life. Understanding and operating in the fullness of God's grace has the potential to make us unstoppable. So get the series and walk in the fullness of God's grace. Contact Alan Bag Ministries at any of these details. We have had a powerful week in the grace of God. And I believe that as you've heard this word, you're already accessing this grace in a more productive way. Because now we understand who our God is, is a God of great grace, and that we can boldly enter that throne and walk in that grace in manifestation of power, see the anointing flow, see that grace go to help, go to work in helping us in a time of need. And so I want to encourage you, get a hold of the set. We, we've spent some time in it, but there's even more here. This is seven complete teachings going into all the scriptures in depth, in detail, and so that we can receive the full faith of it. So get a hold of yours today and make sure that you dig into it and study it out. And so you can see the fullness of God's grace manifesting in you. There are the details. Get it today. Well, it is the weekend. We're going to be getting together in our various places of worship. I really want to encourage you, if you're not yet in a good, spirit-filled, word-based church, get to it now. It's time. Uh, we, we're not supposed to be out there all on our own. We're part of a family. Get into the household of God and let that pastor know. I'm here today. There's gifts in me God has given, and I want to see them coming out and manifesting in the fullness of God's grace to, to help in this church, in this congregation. If you are in Cape Town and you're looking for a place to worship, please come visit us. There are the details. We've got so many campuses now all over the Cape. And if you are in a place where I'm in the building, please come up and say hi, shake my hand. I'd love to meet you. Other than that, you have a great weekend and we'll get together again on Monday. This is Alan Bagg reminding you, Jesus is Lord. Remember, life is a choice. Choose life. God bless you. When you partner with Allen Bag Ministries, you are joining forces with a ministry focused firmly on equipping believers so they can flourish in their ministry and calling. Your partnership with Allen Bag Ministries helps provide the many platforms needed to minister God's powerful word practically and in the many ways it's needing to be received. For those who are already partners with Allen Bag Ministries, thank you for the amazing difference you are helping us make. If you would like to partner with Allen Bag Ministries, please contact us at these details and we will assist you with any information you may need. 
thank you for your partnership. Together, we can make a difference. We invite you to visit us online at allenbagministries.org. On our website, you will discover who we are as a ministry, as well as the call and purpose the Lord has placed on the lives of Alan and Janine Bagg. You will also learn about the various initiatives and ministries that Allen Bag Ministries make use of to reach every tribe and tongue on the global scale. If you've just started your journey, you'll find some great material that will help you build your faith and get you started on your walk with Jesus. If you'd like to be part of the Allen Bag Ministries family, you can also connect with us on our website and be part of our e-family that meet together every week. At allenbagministries.org, there is plenty of information about partnership, as well as many options to come alongside this ministry as a partner. As a partner of Allenbag Ministries, you will have early access to special meetings and seminars with Allen Bag, as well as discounted prices on study material taught here at Allen Bag Ministries. Good morning, my dear friend, and welcome back to Wisdom for Life. My name is Alan Bagg. You can also catch up on any Wisdom for Life programming, or if you prefer, watch our latest Wisdom for Life programs with Alan Bagg on our website. All services at the Bay Christian Family Church are also streamed on our Alan Bagg Ministries website, so you too can be part of our e-family that also participate over weekends and on special occasions. At allenbagministries.org, you can get hold of some great study material and resources, as well as some faith-building products that are occasionally on promotion. Whether you're interested in information about starting your journey as a believer or growing in your understanding and faith, if you're looking to participate in our services and television programs or if you're interested in getting hold of some great study resources, whether you're looking for information about Allen Bag Ministries or if you'd like to come alongside us as a partner, we invite you to visit us at allenbagministries.org so that we can be part of your community and help you in any way we can. So visit us at allenbagministries.org equipping believers so they can prosper in their ministry.